Hello everyone, welcome to Yellow Pages Nursing. Today's video is about assisting a procedure abdominal paracentesis. What is abdominal paracentesis? Paracentesis is a procedure during which fluid from the peritoneal cavity is removed through a needle. It is also called by other names like peritoneocentesis, abdominal tapping, and ascites tapping. When is an abdominal paracentesis needed? The indications may be therapeutic and diagnostic. Where therapeutic involves removal of large amount of fluid and diagnostic involves only removal of small amount of fluid used for diagnosing certain conditions. Therapeutic paracentesis involves removal of 5 liters or even more than that. The main purposes may be to reduce intra-abdominal pressure to relieve symptoms like respiratory distress and abdominal pain. Diagnostic paracentesis require only small quantity of fluid for testing. The purposes may be to find out new onset of ascites, to determine etiology of any condition, if there is any suspected spontaneous or secondary bacterial peritonitis, to detect cancerous cells and to differentiate transudate versus exudate. Transudate is a fluid pushed through the capillary due to high pressure within the capillary, whereas exudate is the fluid that leaks around the cells of the capillaries because of inflammation. How do we differentiate transudate versus exudate? The preferred means is a serum acetic albumin gradient. And this is calculated by using the formula albumin concentration of serum minus albumin concentration of acetic fluid. If this level is greater than or equal to 1.1 gram per deciliter, it is transudative ascites. And if the level is less than 1.1 gram per deciliter, it is exudative ascites. A high gradient of more than 1.1 gram per deciliter indicates the ascites is due to portal hypertension. Now, generally, for patients who undergo abdominal paracentesis, albumin is administered post-procedure. What may be the reason? Let's discuss later in this video. Discussing about the site of the procedure, it is 2 cm below the umbilicus in the midline or 2 to 4 cm superior and medial to the anterior superior iliac spines on either side. You can also visualize the positions of inferior epigastric artery in this picture. What is the position required for patients undergoing abdominal paracentesis? Paula's position should be used by the patients confined to bed. For others, in severe ascites, supine position is used and in case of mild ascites, lateral decubitus position or decubent position is used. Or the patient can also be made to sit on the edge of the bed or on the chair upright with the feet supported on a stool. Let's look into the conditions where abdominal paracentesis is contraindicated. The conditions include uncorrected bleeding, intra-abdominal adhesions, distended bowel, distended urinary bladder, abdominal wall cellulitis at the site of puncture, and pregnancy. Let's discuss the responsibilities before the procedure. Obtain a written informed consent. Prepare the appropriate equipments. If it is a diagnostic procedure, then the sample container should be labeled before the procedure. Ask the patient to empty the bladder. The reason is to prevent injury to the bladder during the procedure and it also provides comfort to the patient. Check the vital signs and weight of the patient, measure the abdominal girth, and keep all the investigation reports on the bedside. Now, what are the things we follow during the procedure? Wash hands and wear PPE, assist the physician in doing the procedure, following aseptic techniques and monitoring vital signs. Once the procedure is done, apply a sterile dressing to the site of puncture, monitor vital signs, check the weight and abdominal girth, measure and document the amount of fluid removed, send the sample for laboratory analysis. Aftercare also includes maintaining intake output chart, monitoring the site for any leakage, 
monitoring for hypovolemia, electrolyte loss, mental status changes, monitoring for hematuria caused by bladder trauma if any, and instruct the client to notify if the urine becomes bloody, pink or red. What may be the complications resulting from abdominal paracentesis? Persistent leak from the puncture site, abdominal wall hematoma, perforation of bowel, introduction of any infection, hypotension after a large volume paracentesis. Before ending the session, let's discuss the answer to the question asked while discussing indications of paracentesis. Now, why do we administer albumin for patients who undergo paracentesis? If it is a therapeutic procedure as we have already discussed, more than 5 liters of acetic fluid is removed. In such cases, it may result in complications like electrolyte imbalances, increase in the serum creatinine levels secondary to larger shifts of intravascular volume. To compensate this, 5 grams of albumin per each liter is supplemented if more than 5 liters of acetic fluid is removed and hence it decreases the before mentioned complications. Here you go with assisting procedure of abdominal paracentesis and the nursing responsibilities. If you find this video useful, please like it and please subscribe it and do not forget to hit the bell icon. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.